My favorite thing about DMing is homebrewing. I love to create. Uh, I'm not one to use modules. I'm not one to use, uh, especially for my bigger enemies, to even use standard creatures. So the only problem that you really run into whenever you're creating creatures is that sometimes you don't have miniatures for them, which is what you see me doing here is I'm creating a miniature for a parasitic ancient black ooze that my players are going to have to run across within the next few sessions. What you see is I am basing the model with aluminum foil. This allows me to bend, to shape, to sculpt the basis of the model very freely, very easily, and you can kind of see that I keep adding up and building in different shapes, and aluminum foil is nice because it will stick together well enough until you get to the next stage. And it's also pretty cheap. Like, this did not take a whole lot of aluminum foil. And... The nice thing whenever you're creating ooze is that hot glue gives you the perfect source of that fluid yet solid substance that the ooze is. Um, you can make drips, you can make rolls, and the only issue that you run into is what you see me dealing with here is all the little hairs and those little strings that you get from the glue. So you have to make sure those are cleaned up. Now, as you see, it does look pretty good. Like I was proud of it at this point. Um, it needs some little extra details, um, but also at the same time, I'm going to apologize. This is my first how-to video I've done in a while, um, and I've kind of forgotten if I'm going to do a how-to, I have to keep everything in frame. Um, but what you see what I'm, I'm doing here is I'm adding a little bit of extra hot glue to kind of bulk up some of the the more prominent strings of ooze and the dripping type details. That can be difficult because once you add that hot glue back on there, it's going to start melting that glue that you're adding it to and that creates can be difficult to actually work with and build up certain areas, especially if they're hanging off. But it can be done with a little bit of patience. Now, whenever I baste it, I actually used two different kinds of spray paint primer. I used a more of a matte black shot from the underside of the model um, and more of a glossy black shot from the up or the top of the model just so that it, the light would reflect a little more and would hopefully give a little bit of a natural shadow. What you see me doing here is I'm using my favorite model paints, which is our, which are Army Painter, and just kind of touching up a few places that my overeager self uh, touched the wet paint, or where I just did not get a thick enough spray with the primer. Um, this paint is my one of my favorites for little extra details. This is Turbo Geek. Uh, it is a kind of a matte black base with a lot of green glitter mixed in. Um, and this is great for just adding a little bit of depth and adding a little bit of extra flair to details on the miniature that the player is going to see whenever a certain light hits the miniature in different ways. Um, this is sometimes are going to be more of details that are going to be brought out only whenever there's somebody closely inspecting the model. But at the same time, if they do see these details, that little bit of glitter, especially in a mo model like this, are just going to kind of bring those details out and kind of make the idea of, oh, there's something a little more here kind of pop. Now, what I'm doing now is I decided that the model needed something else. It looked okay. My players would have been fine with it, but I wasn't fine with it. And so I'm, again, using Army Painter, and this is their disgusting slime color that I decided just will go great uh, on some of these finer details. And what you see me painting are these little veins. And 
they just so happened to be the little strings that were left over that I didn't clean off from the hot glue. And it just occurred that, hey, this could look cool. And so I started painting it, and it really did it. This kind of really came out and just added a little bit of an extra dimension. Um, and instead of the whole model being black with a little bit of glitter hidden in areas, um, this kind of gives it that little bit of an extra pop. And the nice thing about it is, since I homebrewed the whole creature, I can come up with a reason why these, these green veins are even here. Um, so to give a little bit of background on this creature, it's, it's been in this paradise-type nature setting for hundreds of years. And it's essentially been sucking the life out of everything, because that's how it expands. Um, it is very much set on its main goal of expanding and growth and, uh, it, well, if you kind of might have picked up on one of my inspirations, which was Marvel symbiotes, um, but instead, this ooze has a very parasitic type relationship with its surroundings, um, and the odd thing is, there's also, which my players don't know, there's also a little bit of necrotic properties. Um, that whenever the ooze wants to, it can actually expand into corpse of even long dead creatures and reanimate them. Um, so it does have a little bit of a surprise for my players going in. So it's kind of part of the background of a little bit of necrotic little bit of acid damage and as you see here here's kind of what i've left the model as is its finished product um it may not look as pretty as what you're going to find whenever you're going to have like a finished whiz kids model or something or a 3d printed model but it's a black ooze it's not supposed to be pretty and as you see, I did make a functional kind of claw where I can sit or I can grab a miniature or even have the miniature encased in the ooze itself. So I, long story short, I'm very happy with it. And the thing is, if you ever need a custom ooze, this was not hard to do. This was my first try. So thank you all for watching and hit that subscribe button.